Hello, uh, in this mind map, we are going to just focus on some of the basic aspects of neoplasia, namely the definitions as well as some basic nomenclature. So neoplasia is defined as a series of genetic events. So you can see that it starts at the subcellular level at the genes, and this gives rise to abnormal growth. I will elaborate more on abnormal growth very soon. Um, the word neoplasia actually is from Greek and English translation, and it literally translates into new growth. So what does the word neoplasm actually mean? Neoplasm can be defined as a clonal proliferation of cells, and this is accompanied by stroma such as blood vessels and connective tissue, and collectively these are capable of abnormal growth. So what do we mean when we say abnormal growth? Well, this means that the growth is excessive, so there is too much proliferation. It is unregulated, so it does not come under any hormonal regulation. And it is autonomous. It does not require anything, any stimulus to start the growth, but it just carries on without any requirement for external stimulus. So when we're looking at neoplasms, uh, it is first, I think, most important to classify them into clinically significant parts. And the most useful classification would be according to the clinical behavior. So according to clinical behavior, neoplasms can be classified into two very broad groups, benign tumors or benign neoplasms. We will use the term tumor and neoplasm interchangeably and malignant tumors or malignant neoplasms. This will also be often the first questions that the patients will ask. Doctor, is this cancer? So cancer refers to malignant tumors or malignant neoplasms, and this is actually uh, translated from the Latin word for crab, possibly because of the spreading morphology of these malignant tumors. So let's start by looking at some of the characteristics or the clinical behavior of benign neoplasms. These are relatively innocent or indolent. They generally are not capable of invading into the organ, the primary organ or adjacent organs. They do not destroy tissue and they do not produce distant metastasis or distant spread. Also, they tend to be localized and relatively slow growing. However, this does not mean that benign tumors always have very minimal clinical effects. Some of them can also give rise to quite serious uh, clinical manifestations, for example, uh, in tumors in the brain, because the skull is a very restrictive and a very hard cavity. Tumors in the brain can actually give rise to compression of vital structures and can actually cause death as a result. Now, when it comes to malignant tumors, these tend to behave in a much worse fashion, so they have the potential to cause serious disease and death. Um, they do invade into the organ itself as well as potentially into adjacent organs. They can have a destructive growth pattern and they can of course spread. And there are three main ways in which malignant tumors can spread. They can spread into the lymphatic channels and end up in the regional lymph nodes. They can spread into the blood vessels, which give rise to distant metastases, for example, in the liver, in the brain, in the lungs. And they can also spread in within body cavities, and this is called transcellomic spread. Now, having looked at the behavior of benign versus malignant tumors, let's just have a very brief, quick look at how do we actually name tumors or nomenclature. And tumors are named according to the types of tissues they arise from. So, for example, the main types would be epithelial tumors, mesenchymal tumors, which are the soft tissue tumors or bone tumors, and hematolymphoid tumors. So tumors are named according to two things. One, the tissue of origin, and two, whether they are benign or malignant. So let's take a look at epithelial tumors first that are benign. They will have this suffix. Oma. So it is tissue type followed by oma. So for example, if it's a gland forming tumor, it's called adenoma. Adeno refers to glands. If it is a squamous tumor, sometimes we can have a squamous papilloma. So again, oma. 
Now, if it is an epithelial malignancy or an epithelial malignant tumor, we use the suffix carcinoma. So a gland-forming malignant tumor will be called adenocarcinoma. And if it's squamous, it would be squamous cell carcinoma. An example of a mesenchymal tumor that is benign, that is composed of fatty tissue, this will be called a lipoma, again with a suffix oma. Chondroma refers to a cartilage-forming benign mesenchymal tumor. What about malignant mesenchymal tumors? They will have the suffix sarcoma. So if it is a bone-forming malignant mesenchymal tumor, this will be osteosarcoma. And the malignant counterpart to a fatty tumor would be liposarcoma. And for a cartilage-forming tumor, it would be chondrosarcoma. Now, for hematolymphoid tumors, there are generally no benign counterparts, so we have lymphoma and leukemia. Unfortunately, there are some exceptions to the rule when it comes to nomenclature. So there are some tumors that actually sound benign because it is just oma um, with a suffix, but they are malignant. And an example would be a hepatoma. This is actually a malignant tumor that is formed from liver cells. So the correct name is actually hepatocellular carcinoma. Sometimes they're called hepatoma. And actually, melanomas are malignant, even though they only have the suffix oma. These are malignant tumors arising from melanocytes. So just a quick recap. We have looked here at the definition of neoplasia, neoplasms, how the growth is abnormal. We have looked at the behavior in terms of the two main types of neoplasms, benign and malignant, and had a very quick look at how we name benign and malignant tumors of different tissue origins.